Hey there, thanks for tuning into Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and today we have a really interesting look at some of the prototype Lego sets that never came to be, concept artwork, and original designs for Lego Ninjago 2016 Skybound. Now Skybound is one of my favorite Ninjago seasons. It's definitely not one of the best, I think, but I really do like it because of the villain and the whole steampunk aesthetic and concept but they originally were gonna push this in an even crazier direction with some absolutely wild canceled set prototypes that we're gonna take a look at on this list featuring really interesting pieces from Bionicle and other Lego themes. This is absolutely a crazy smorgasbord of all sorts of interesting Lego set designs, constant artwork, and early designs for what would eventually become Lego Ninjago Skybound. So let's dive into it right now and take a look at everything these concept art designs have to offer. The development of Ninjago Skybound is actually one of the most interesting to look at compared to many of the other Ninjago sub-themes. If you don't know, Ninjago Skybound was actually developed almost entirely independently of Tommy Anderson, who was at the time one of the co-creators of Ninjago because he was focused on creating concepts for the movie and season 7. Because of that, Skybound was kind of just written up by the Hageman brothers, the writers of the show, and Tommy had little to no involvement with the story itself. The entire pitch pitch for Skybound actually came out of an original pitch for a Sky Pirates theme, which originated all the way back in 2004. This image comes from Mike Rayhawk's website, where he explicitly states that LEGO went back and took his old July 2004 concept pitch for Sky Pirates, essentially renamed it Ninjago Skybound and said, hey, can you fit this into Ninjago? It's one of the first explicit times that we've actually heard an internal worker at LEGO say that yes, they went and saw a concept for a full-on theme, and were like, you know what, why don't we actually make this a Ninjago sub-theme instead? Which is certainly quite fascinating that LEGO continues to do that, and is even willing to go as far back as 2004 and even before that to decide on different sub-themes to come up with. Who knows what all sorts of cancelled concepts and theme ideas lie around LEGO HQ from years ago just waiting for somebody to come by it and say, you know what, I feel like that could fit in Ninjago, and then it is. So this is the original Sky Pirates concept from 2004, so this is very, very early development of what would eventually become Ninjago Skybound. You can see the general gist of it with pirates flying through the skies, planes, blimps, and zeppelins, and of course that would later translate onto the final version that we would get for the sets themselves. We'll be taking a look at some cancelled sets, as well as prototype images and concept artwork in this video, but I want to briefly talk about some of the packaging concepts as well. Mike Rayhawk was actually able to post some early packaging designs for what would eventually become the box art for Ninjago Skybound, featuring a couple different versions of Jay, either with or without the eye patch, and with different designs for lightning streaking off them, which is really interesting just how much effort goes into making the designs. They also considered doing a completely different look and feel for the Jin Blade or the Sword of Souls here, which I personally really wish they did. As you can see, they were actually using recolors of the axe pieces to show the elemental energy coursing through the axes themselves. I think that would have been super cool to get it because you would have gotten the gold ones for Wu, trans blue for Nia, trans green for Lloyd, and so on and so forth. And actually, I believe almost all of these colors, if not all of them, actually do exist as Lego pieces. So you could do it if you wanted to, but they eventually decided just to keep it all the same at gunmetal gray for the axes and just change the color of the blade, which I think is just a little bit less interesting, but it is what it is. For me, it is cool to see the different elemental effects they were experimenting with when showcasing the Sword of Souls on the box art. Clearly, this is a preliminary version of what it would eventually become, but it's still interesting to see what they initially were going with. Moving onwards from that though, a lot of the other bits of information in this video come from either the San Diego Comic Con 2016 presentation on Skybound, which thankfully at least at one point was uploaded to YouTube and I currently have saved on my computer for future reference, as well as a ton of sketches posted by both Tommy and Drissen, as well as the Ninjago team themselves when they released a ton of concept artwork and prototype model images to celebrate Ninjago's 10 year anniversary. Some of the images in this video come from my friends over at Masters of Brick Jitsu. Would definitely recommend you check them out because they actually do get access to some early stuff like this from time to time, which is very cool to showcase. 
So starting off with just the very early concept sketches, the entire theme of the season, at least in the part that Tommy was personally involved in, was a djinn stealing the souls of the ninja. Obviously you can see that the concept threads were there from the very beginning in this early concept artwork of, at least what he was called at the time, Azad, who later became Nauticon, changed very last minute because Azad is actually the name of a real life dictator, so they had to change the name super last minute. You can actually still see the old name referenced in some actual descriptions of the show, so they had to re-record a lot of dialogue for that, but that is quite funny as they actually had to change that. But here are some of the early concept sketches done where he's holding that picture of Delara, has a very early version of the Sword of Souls, and then obviously the season focusing on Jay and his relationship with Nia and where that was going. So it's really interesting seeing how they were trying to explore a very interesting dichotomy and trying to make the characters a little bit deeper. You see Jay surrounded by piles of money, but he doesn't have what he actually wants, which is his relationship, which is quite an interesting topic for Ninjago to delve into, and they kind of address that in the show, but it honestly wasn't super in-depth, and I definitely feel like there are some issues in the way that the characters were characterized in Skybound, but it was the general intent of the season to focus on that relationship and how that was going to work, and one of the early ideas of Skybound had just the ninja's souls being trapped in the sword, leaving their bodies basically without a soul as just corpses or just soulless bodies. I get why they didn't do that, but it would have been really crazy to see the ninja's bodies just completely lifeless, and they would have to keep care of each of the ninja's bodies as they had to return their souls. Pretty metal concept, but I understand why they made it easier and just logistically made their entire bodies be sucked into the sword as well. Lastly, moving on from that, there's one other illustration of what would become Cole's dragon, which never appeared in the show, really. I mean, it was supposed to be Cole's elemental dragon, which is the dragon they can summon, but honestly, doesn't really look a lot like it. I find it very interesting, though, that this image features the ninja in more of a humanoid form. You can see it doesn't look like a minifigure. The ninja kind of has standard human proportions and legs, but I guess they were just trying to get across a sense of scale for what would become the smallest set of the wave in Cole's elemental dragon. But speaking of dragons, I think it's time to actually delve into some of the concept designs for the actual main dragon that we got for the wave itself, which is Jay's elemental dragon. Now this is really, really unfortunate to me because when prototype images and concept art and even the preliminary images first leaked back in 2016 or 2015, I remember being really excited by the excellent parts usage on the nose of the dragon. Utilizing the LEGO Hero Factory Beast jumper piece to form the nostrils is a really smart piece usage, and would have been the only time that piece would have appeared outside of Hero Factory. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, they scrapped it for the final set, leaving it with just two brick-built stud nostrils, which honestly I feel like are a little bit disappointing compared to the very clever build and sculpt they had for the original version of the set. If I had to guess, they probably decided to scrap it because that connection of placing the Hero Factory jumper on a stud was deemed to be not strong enough to actually support a connection, but it still would have been really cool to see that. Obviously, as you can see, the white integrated into the dragon as part of the color scheme was already part of the original design, which is quite interesting to see that being factored in. But overall, I definitely do actually prefer the concept model compared to the one we got, because I do feel the one we got is one of the weaker Ninjago dragons, it just isn't quite right in the sculpting of the head. Still very cool to get a recolor of the Metal Beard beard from the Lego movie though, in dark blue as the bottom jaw, that is another really good parts usage. Speaking of dragons, though, we may as well take a look at the second wave of Skybound, which also featured a Lloyd dragon. This one was kind of meant to coincide with both Day of the Departed and Skybound itself, and conversely to the other design, I actually greatly prefer the final design we got in the set as opposed to this. The final set version integrates big fig arms as part of the muscles on the side of the dragon, which I think is very clever, and you can see a couple of different iterations of the dragon here, but obviously I think this one feels the most most rudimentary and unrefined compared to a lot of the other prototype models on this list, and personally I'm very glad they chose to make Lloyd's Dragon just a lot more interesting for the final set, and give it a more vibrant and interesting design for the way they did the foil on the wings to be sparkly, the way they designed the head just feels a lot more streamlined and sleek, and of course the body is greatly improved. So this is an example of a prototype model that I definitely feel was greatly improved for the final product. Moving on from that though, there are a couple of other really interesting designs here that I want to take a look at because 
All of these designs are for concept vehicles for the Sky Pirates, and out of pretty much all the designs you're about to see, besides the early designs of Misfortune's Keep, only really one of them sort of was adapted into an official set, with the other ones not even being used at all. This one is the closest to what was used in an official set, of course that being the Raid Zeppelin, which did use these hot air balloon elements in a blimp-like form. This, however, is a completely different and more radical design, which envisions a dual blimp style of build, utilizing the hot air balloon pieces front and back. And one of my favorite details here is that they actually were able to factor in the Bionicle G2 Pohatu Stormerang pieces, which look really good as wings. I really wish they did use those because it was coming out at the same time as Bionicle, so they totally could have repurposed those pieces and they would have fit in very well, but unfortunately they didn't decide to do that for whatever reason, and it looks like this entire set was actually scaled down a little bit. The final set that we got was a lot smaller, didn't really have a lot of those orange propeller details that would have been very striking, and while I do love the final set, and do feel like it is one of the most interesting Ninjago villain builds, this one is a little bit cooler to me. That being said, it's got nothing on the next two concepts, which are two types of builds I really wish we eventually got because they are just so, so cool. This build right here utilizes three versions of the Bionicle Xamarisphere launcher in a very similar setup to a classic Bionicle Titan set, Mazika. The part actually last appeared in the 2014 LEGO Ultra Agents Toxikita attack, so they totally could have used it in 2016 because, as we know, molds are destroyed after five years of not being used, so technically they could have used it if they wanted to up to 2019, but unfortunately, maybe they just decided it wasn't on the table because it is a very Bionicle focused function and maybe didn't quite fit the aesthetic of the Sky Pirates they were going for. That being said, it is a very, very cool function to have this entire set be built around that actual firing motion, and I think it would have been really cool to introduce new audiences, especially Ninjago fans and folks really into the theme, to a very, very interesting Bionicle play feature, so maybe I'm a little bit biased, but I personally would have loved to see this as a set. The minifigure is also quite interesting, seeing how they were just kind of kit bashing different elements from Star Wars and, of course, some actual Lego firefighting tubes just to make steampunk sky pirates, and this one really does push it more in the steampunk direction, it's just something that for whatever reason Lego decided not to make, which is too bad. The other build here is maybe a little more understandable as to why they didn't produce it. Personally, I think it's very cool. A lot of people have drawn references online to this looking like something else, and uh, I, I guess I can kind of see it, and it, it maybe kind of looks a little bit funny. You have the two round spherical objects around a very long and narrow front part, so maybe LEGO was like, ah, oh, well maybe we shouldn't have a, a vehicle shaped like that. But honestly, I feel like, unless you're really looking for it, it's not that obvious, and it is one of the most uniquely shaped vehicles I've ever seen LEGO potentially produce. You can see it actually has a handle so you can swoosh it around on the back with anchors on the back which looks super cool. It again is using the Stormerang pieces from Bionicle. Really wish that we actually got those used in system sets and the parts usage here is quite interesting because you even have some Lego Technic elements that are typically used for steering functions at the front there as guns. You have of course two copies of the blimp elements in the dark orange color being used as the twin engines on each side. You have an orange recolor of the fin for the jet engine in the center. It's just a really interesting build and one that is infinitely more interesting than something like the Sky Shark that we got, which kind of was just a standard jet, and honestly, not the most interesting build to me. I feel like any one of these sets could have been a very, very good replacement to the Sky Shark, but maybe they weren't able to pull these off at the smaller price point, which is why they had to design something cheaper. Uh, that being said, I do hope that maybe one day somebody will recreate these in studio because that would be really awesome to see and obviously it's using all sorts of great building techniques and basketball hoops on the back of the engines, bones everywhere, you've got the anchors, the Technic struts, the power miners, ribcage elements, just all sorts of really cool parts usages here that I think would be really fun to swish around as an actual model. Moving on from that though, we come to the final Sky Pirate concept model prototype we have. There's a couple others for the Ninja that we'll take a look at in a second, but this one is the first version of Miss Fortune's Keep. Obviously, as you can see, they were going for a much more spindly appearance for the lower mouth and actual launch platform underneath the ship itself, and personally, 
this is another example of one where I feel like the final set actually is a lot better. The only difference that I do really like is that they use the power miner rib cage elements as the or the roll cage elements on their sides as the actual top of the cockpit in silver, which we've never gotten before. And I think that was really cool. I think that's a very clever parts usage, but that being said, I still greatly prefer the final set we got where this next image here is a lot closer to the final set. It's not quite the final one, but you can see they were kind of deciding on the overall look and feel of this, and I definitely feel like this one is a lot better done than the first concept art, and definitely moves us closer to the final design in the set. Lastly, there are a couple of other proposed ninja vehicle prototypes that we can take a look at in this video. The first one is kind of not really interesting, it's just a version of Kai's bike, and the Kai and Nia dual bike set was honestly one of the least interesting sets to come out of Ninjago and especially from Skybound, so it's just nothing super crazy to me. I guess it's cool how they were trying to come up with some interesting shaping on the sides of the vehicle, but it definitely is one of those things that I feel like is kind of like a throwaway build. Something much more interesting, though, is this version of Jay's jet. Obviously, Jay did not get a jet in Skybound, but they were considering giving it to him. I guess they were kind of going back and forth as to whether they wanted to give him a jet or a dragon. And while I'm glad they went with the elemental dragon, because I don't know when else we would have gotten it, this is a really interesting dual helicopter style of jet that is somewhat reminiscent of what we would eventually get for him in the Lego Ninjago movie, but just overall a very interesting vehicle depicting a entirely new concept for Ninjago we haven't really seen before, in the style of a twin rotor helicopter that we would see in stuff like Agents. Moving onwards from that, we just have a very brief overview of some interesting concepts which were publicly released on LEGO.com for Woo Crew. All of these concepts actually come from Will Film because they directly are from the animators of the show, so a lot of these are basically them showcasing the 3D models and renders of the different elements of the season that they had as 3D models to showcase and different concept art that went into making Jinjago. The interesting thing is that they do have a render for Nautacon's father Kanjikon as a standard LEGO minifigure, although unfortunately I do think this was always supposed to be just a render because he has a beard, he's using the Sensei Wu beard in grey, which we haven't actually ever gotten but that piece doesn't actually fit over the actual Stone Warrior four-armed element, so unless they were doing something kind of tricky with trying to figure out how to make a new piece for it, it is unlikely we would have ever gotten him as a set, but it is still really cool to see him as a 3D model render, utilizing the Aura Singh hair, also recolored in light grey from LEGO Star Wars, which was, I believe, last seen in 2011 or 2012. Moving onwards, this was also when we got a full-on map of Ninjago at the time. Of course, this is now outdated because of Dragons Rising, but it is very cool to see a full-on map of all the locations we had visited so far in Ninjago. And there is just one other image, I am not actually sure which presentation this image is from, but it showcases some sort of concept art presentation being done on Skybound, where you can see the actual 3D model for the Sword of Souls being used. It's the only image we have from the presentation, but it's quite interesting, and if anyone has more information on what this presentation was, I'd really appreciate it in the comments. With that, we have summed up our look at Ninjago Skybound's early concepts and prototypes. A lot of really interesting stuff to take a look at here, and I hope you enjoyed our look at some early development concepts behind one of my personal favorite Ninjago sub-themes. As always, let me know down in the comments what do you think, do you wish we got some of these sets, and I hope you enjoyed this special look. Alright, and with that we have summed up our look at these concept artwork and prototypes. From LEGO Ninjago Skybound, let me know down in the comments what do you think of these, do you wish that we actually got some of these as actual LEGO sets, or are you happy with what we got? I know that I really would have loved to see that triple Bionicle Xamarosphere Launcher Glider as a set, although I do understand the parts were probably discontinued by then, which is why they didn't do that, but still, would have been so so cool to see. But of course, it's always really cool to see a look behind the curtain at what could have been. I hope you enjoyed this video, and be sure to like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.